Hello, I'm Esther Bonney from La Plata, Maryland. Today, I'm excited to present my research on horticultural exposure, a promising and underutilized approach to addressing two of the most pressing issues facing today's youth, environmental disconnect and a mental health epidemic. Two years ago, back in 2022, I founded a nonprofit called Nurture Natives with a mission to empower youth through environmental action that promotes native biodiversity. Native species are plants and animals that evolved in a specific region over hundreds or thousands of years, adapting to the local climate, soil, and ecosystems and playing essential roles in maintaining ecological balance. To date, Nurture Natives has engaged over 9,400 youth in planting 2.2 million seeds and distributing over 56,000 seedlings. Through this work, I've witnessed firsthand the untapped potential of horticultural exposure, connecting young people with native plants and pollinators through ecologically based gardening. This journey sparked my passion for researching the critical intersection of youth mental health and environmental stewardship and how these interactions can be incorporated into schools, community centers, homes, and mental health resources to foster empowerment and ecological responsibility. We are at the crossroads of two major crises, a global biodiversity crisis and a, an unprecedented youth mental health epidemic. Today, nearly 40% of high school students report persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness, and suicide is now the second leading cause of death among those aged 10 to 14. Meanwhile, global biodiversity has plummeted by 69% since the 1970s, with 41% of ecosystems now at risk of collapse. While these might seem like completely separate issues, they are deeply interconnected. As we have distanced ourselves from nature, we've lost more than biodiversity. We've lost a vital aspect of our own well-being. Nature deprivation and alienation exacerbates mental health issues specifically among youth. For example, urban populations where access to green space is limited are 20% more likely to experience anxiety and 40% more likely to develop mood disorders compared to those in rural communities. This is the core mission of my nonprofit Nurture Natives and my passion for this research to reconnect youth with nature through horticultural exposure, simultaneously addressing the mental health and biodiversity crises. Despite these proven connections between youth mental health and environmental stewardship, the field of horticultural exposure remains underutilized, under-researched, and underfunded. In my interviews with dozens of horticultural therapists throughout my polygen's journey from the American Horticultural Therapy Association, it became evident that while horticultural exposure is acknowledged fairly for its therapeutic benefits, there is a significant gap in research specifically addressing its impact on youth. My research uniquely addresses the intersection of youth mental health and environmental stewardship through the lens of horticultural exposure. By focusing on this critical intersection, I hope to fill the gap in existing literature and demonstrate how engaging youth with horticulture can simultaneously promote their mental well being and foster a sense of environmental responsibility. This recognition. This recognition of the gap in both research and practice led me to develop my research question. How can horticultural exposure be effectively employed to address youth mental health challenges and promote environmental stewardship, considering its impacts on empowerment and sense of self? In undertaking this research, I aim to prove that horticultural exposure is one of the most highly effective nature-based interventions for simultaneously addressing mental health and environmental stewardship among youth.
To rigorously address these connections, my research included a systematic review, one-time intervention studies, and original data collection. Guided by my research question, I conducted interventions with 74 youth ages 6 to 14 in the Southern Maryland Tri-County region. Each intervention lasted 60 minutes. Sessions began with a 40-minute interactive presentation covering three key environmental concepts, biodiversity, native species, and pollination. This was followed by a hands-on planting session where participants prepared soil and planted local ecotype seeds of Echinacea perea, commonly known as purple coneflower. The post-intervention survey results were compelling. Belief that actions can contribute to solving environmental problems increased by 17.5%. Participation in environmentally supportive actions increased by 11.2%. Feelings of connection to the community rose by 6.4%. Interest in environmental issues grew by 13.3%. Finally, confidence in making a positive environmental impact increased by 10.7%. These increases may seem modest at first glance, but consider this. The significant shifts happened after just a one-hour intervention. Imagine the potential impact if horticultural exposure were integrated into regular educational and mental health programs. My data indicates that even brief interactions with horticulture-based activities can promote empowerment, environmental stewardship, and stronger community ties, elements vital for both personal mental well-being and societal well-being. The scientific basis for these post-intervention -inter attitudes is rooted in ecological and psychological theories. Biophilia, a concept introduced by biologist Edward Wilson, suggests that humans have an innate affinity for nature. By engaging with native species, youth can reconnect with this intrinsic relationship. Research in environmental psychology supports this, showing that time spent in natural settings significantly improves cognitive functioning and emotional well-being. Moreover, studies indicate that early involvement in activities like gardening can lead to a 35% increase in pro-environmental behaviors, aligning with my data findings. This research is not just theoretical. By demonstrating horticulture exposure's effectiveness in improving psychological well-being and fostering environmental stewardship, my research provides actionable insights for educators, mental health professionals, and environmental advocates. I urge you to consider broader implementation of horticultural practices in educational and mental health settings, as these activities offer simultaneous benefits that align with the interests of various stakeholders. Through Nurture Natives, I've witnessed how these practices can transform lives, communities, and ecosystems, reshaping how youth interact with their environments and creating a future where mental well being and environmental stewardship are recognized as deeply interconnected. This work extends beyond planting gardens. It's about reshaping how young people view themselves in relation to the natural world. I'm honored to have been invited to share my insights and research at the TEDx Hagerstown Women event this December, where I hope to inspire a broader conversation about the role of horticulture in cultivating both mental wellness and ecological health of our native ecosystems. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Esther. Um, I have a question for you. What are your next steps with your research or your nonprofit? Yeah, of course. So with my research, we are just beginning. Like I said, this is a significant gap in the research, and I hope my research kind of acts as a pilot program, pilot research, and I want to continue expanding and reaching out to other horticultural therapists and other people in the native plant and youth mental health community 
I'm really interested in reaching out to people from the Jed Foundation dedicated to providing college students with mental health resources as I go into college to see how we can incorporate um, horticultural exposure and horticultural therapy into more college mental health resources. That's awesome. And what was the most challenging part of your research and your project? A really time-consuming part was designing the pre and post surveys. I looked at so many different wellness factors and so many different environmental psychology factors and talked with mental health professionals and horticultural therapists as to what they think the most beneficial one most beneficial survey questions would be and ones that youth could still understand and wouldn't feel were invasive at all. So that was a very time consuming aspect. And then collecting that data and analyzing it, it took a long time and it was it was it was a learning process. <laughs>